All right, guys, it's Friday. That means we have a paint video coming up for you. We've got a bunch of like semi-broken furniture. Uh, it's, it needs a lot of repair. We're gonna spend the first little part of the video doing repairs, and then we'll jump in and do a fun finish on them. Stay tuned. Make sure if you like these kinds of videos that you give us a thumbs up and subscribe. For today's repairs, I'm only using some wood glue and I picked up this Minwax high performance wood filler. I thought it was going to be some sort of fun stainable wood filler, but it's essentially all purpose Bondo and I paid a little bit more for less than I would get with the Bondo. So while it works really well, it's not necessarily any different than the Bondo I've been using. So keep that in mind. This Type on 2 glue takes about an hour to set up and about 24 hours to cure. It's one of my favorite wood glues because it's got a fairly long open time, so if you need to move something real quick, you can. And I'm going to make sure that glue pushes out all the way around so I know I've got good coverage and then wipe off the excess. Next up, we've got this leg that broke off. It didn't have any mechanical fasteners, meaning like screws or nails or anything like that. It was just glued on, so that's the way I'm going to repair it. The wood actually split and broke right here. The glue bond held. So I'm just gonna glue it because that bond is still strong and we'll get a new bond where the glue is on the break. So this little table here doesn't need a ton of repair. It's got this split here, but someone's already put wood filler in there for me. So I'm just gonna sand that. And then it has some wobble on the legs. The doweling is loose. So what I'll do is I'll pry that open and then re-glue these and push them back together. All right, so this dowel stayed in there and this dowel stayed in there. So we're just gonna glue the opposite sides. Uh, the silly thing is, is I had gloves in my pocket and I forgot to put them on. Wear gloves with this stuff, it's sticky and gooey and it doesn't like to clean off your hands very easily. Had some extra from that project, so we're gonna come over here and fix this one. I could remove this veneer and sand this whole top down, but I think this is going to be the easier, quicker fix rather than soaking it and fighting this veneer for a few hours. I'm just gonna Bondo it and sand that flush. I waited about 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this smooth or at least flush, make it look half decent. So it's not like a goopy Bondo mess and then I'll sand the other one and we'll be ready to paint them. All right, we're gonna have a paint off. They're basically the same table. Mine is Petticoat Pink's. Hey, you're starting already. I have to or you'll win. Zeb's is farm fresh. Let's do this. You gotta do a good uh, job, no dripping or you're disqualified. So like we always like to say, get the paint on, then smooth your brush strokes out later. I think we're just gonna go with basic colors on these today. We're not gonna do any crazy blended finish or anything. Maybe some white wax if we have some bleed through issues, but we'll see the darker colors. Jamie might have bleed through, but this farm fresh should be good to go. Well, I have to be careful because I am wearing a new shirt. Just don't cling any on mine. I don't want pink on my farm fresh. Okay. That's a good way. You got like one bar in the middle and two on the sides. I got four bars all the way around. So 
Sometimes you gotta get down and lay down next to the piece and paint it good. The crazier the angle, the better the paint job, you know? Or do it up on a table. That's the rules. That's the rules. Who makes the rules? Trying. She's got like a leg and a half to go and I'm on my last leg. But she had two extra legs and a middle support piece. But my top was bigger, so I feel like it's a tie. Um, we all know that legs are harder and you do realize you didn't even finish your top. My you top to is totally there. done. Yeah, there's a huge spot right here. No. I'll, I'll get it with a couple swipes. Look, I'm done. No, you're not done. So right here on the edge of where the Bondo was, the veneer was not glued down. It was getting ready to bubble again. So what I'm gonna do is I'll probably sand this again even though it's painted and sand that smooth and then I'll paint over that again. And this is what we were talking about like bleed through. You can kind of see the coloration here where it's got some varying fun tones of color we don't necessarily want. That's why this is probably gonna get a white wax. No more racing. Mine is decidedly larger. Can you open my jar though? Okay, so I'm using cake batter because this was already yellow and I felt like I needed to stick with that. Zeb has French millinery, which is a great like light lavender in the gray family and it'll pair well with our other colors. So this next week we'll be celebrating the reopening of the store since the situation and the new clothing boutique that I've added in the shop. So these will be a fun, bright way to celebrate that. I just want to point out the bottom of this, not finished before. <laughs> Everybody always gives us a hard time for not painting the bottoms of things. And, uh, you know, most manufacturers don't paint the backs, the bottoms, or the insides of dressers. Right here and right here where Zeb sanded it, you can see a little bit of bleed through. Not bad, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Salvation Solution in clear to prime it. You do two coats, let it dry completely, then wait overnight and repaint. I'm not waiting overnight because I'm a rebel. And the bleed through is not that bad. You can also do this underneath, but I just was waiting to see where it actually bled through at. I could use the white salvation solution, but I don't want white on this piece, like white primer showing. That's where the clear comes in handy. I'm putting the salvation solution on this too because where we sanded it had a little bit of bleed through and Zeb came, Zeb came back and sanded the high spots. So I'm just, I'm probably gonna do the whole thing. It actually has a strange pattern of bleed through that's very faint that I feel like is gonna come through later. Time to distress. We're gonna use 220 grit and get these sanded down and smoothed out. We'll probably also hand sand just a little bit on the details where the sander can't get, but we're gonna do the base sand with this and then we'll get the details in a minute. Jamie's just doing a little light hand sanding here. Just kind of getting where the sander won't get and smoothing out any drips or brush strokes or anything like that that we might have. Well, distressing solves a multitude of sins. So if I'm like stopped somewhere and I got a clump of paint, I just sand it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some clear wax. I already used the DIY white wax on it to give it some fun highs and lows. You can see a little bit of an outline of the repair, but overall I'm pleased with the way it came out and I wanna give some extra durability to the top. So clear wax, we'll let it sit and we'll buff it.
All right, I am loving the way that these turned out. We actually found a spot in the shop for them, so I'm gonna go get them staged up in price so that way we are ready to open tomorrow. You know, it always starts out, we're gonna just do these tables real quick, and here we are late afternoon getting done, but they look great. Yeah, but we decided to do four instead of one, so I, I feel like we're winning. Make sure you guys hit up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products we use, and if you like my shirt, make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintagehome.com. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIYs.